Samantha always feared the dark. A primal dread, suffocating, clung to her. Shadows whispered secrets, unseen eyes watched. Sleep offered no escape, only nightmares. Her childhood home, a Victorian mansion, amplified her fear. Every corner held shadows, every creak a whispered threat. But none were as terrifying as the attic. Locked, forbidden, it pulsed with an unseen menace. Samantha avoided it, her fear a tangible barrier, yet it called to her in her dreams. The accident came without warning. A car crash, metal screaming, glass shattering. Samantha, a passenger, was thrown into darkness. She awoke weeks later, trapped in a white, sterile room. Doctors called it a miracle, but her world had fractured. She couldn't remember the accident, only flashes of pain and terror. Worse, a chilling detachment had settled over her. She felt unreal, a ghost in her own body. Her reflection in the window, a stranger staring back. Her nightmares intensified, populated by faceless figures and echoing whispers. The attic, a recurring backdrop, its presence more menacing than ever. Doctors struggled to diagnose her. Her physical injuries healed, but her mind remained fractured. She spoke little, her voice a monotone, devoid of emotion. A rare diagnosis followed Cotard's syndrome. The living dead, they called it. A delusion of negation. The belief that one was dead, a walking corpse. Her nightmares morphed, reflecting her new reality. She saw decaying figures, their eyes hollow pits. She felt the chill of death, smelled the musty odor of decay. And always, the attic beckoned, promising answers to her fragmented existence. Her parents, desperate, tried everything. Therapists, medication, nothing pierced the fog of her delusion. Samantha remained adrift, tethered only to her nightmares and the growing obsession with the attic. One night, driven by an unseen force, Samantha found herself drawn to the attic door. The lock, once an impenetrable barrier, yielded easily. The musty scent of decay washed over her, confirming her darkest fears. The attic was a cavern of shadows filled with forgotten relics. Cobwebs draped everything like ghostly shrouds. Dust swirled in the moonlight, filtering through grimy windows. And there, at the far end, stood a mirror. Its ornate frame, tarnished silver, seemed to writhe in the dim light. The glass, clouded with age, reflected distorted images that flickered like dying embers. It called to her, a siren song of despair. Samantha felt a chill crawl down her spine, yet she couldn't resist the pull, the need to see what lurked within its depths. As Samantha drew closer, the mirror seemed to pulse with a life of its own. The reflections within twisted, morphing into grotesque parodies of human forms. Whispers emanated from its depths, beckoning her closer. What is happening? She reached out, her hand trembling, and touched the cold glass. A jolt of energy surged through her, sending a wave of dizziness crashing over her. She stumbled back, but it was too late. No, no, this can't be real. The mirror rippled, and for a terrifying moment she saw her own reflection. Not the vacant shell she had become accustomed to, but a horrifying visage of decay. Her skin, grey and rotting, her eyes, empty sockets. Panic seized her. Help, somebody help me. She tried to pull away, but an unseen force held her captive. The whispers grew louder, swirling around her, taunting her with her worst fears. She was trapped, her sanity slipping with each passing moment. You cannot escape. You belong to us now. Just as the darkness threatened to consume her, a voice cut through the fog of terror. Her mother, her voice frantic, calling her name. The sound, faint at first, grew stronger, pulling Samantha back from the brink. Samantha! Samantha, can you hear me? With a surge of adrenaline, she ripped her hand from the mirror. The distorted images vanished, the whispers dying down to an unsettling silence. She stumbled back, her heart pounding against her ribs like a captive bird. Mom, I... Her mother rushed to her side, her arms enveloping her in a warm, comforting embrace. The feel of her touch, real and solid, anchored Samantha to reality. The nightmare for now receded. It's okay, you're safe now. And for the first time in what felt like an eternity, Samantha believed her. 
The road to recovery was long and arduous. The Cotard syndrome, while abated, lingered like a shadow. Therapy sessions became a lifeline, a safe space to confront her fears and anxieties. It's not easy, but I'm trying every day. The attic, once a symbol of terror, transformed into a reminder of her ordeal. With her family's support, she began the slow process of cleaning and organizing, reclaiming the space from the grip of her nightmares. We're here for you every step of the way. Her parents, their faces etched with concern and unwavering love, became pillars of strength. Their presence, a constant reminder that she was not alone in her fight. And slowly, gradually, color began to seep back into Samantha's world. I never thought I'd smile again. Laughter, once a distant memory returned, hesitant at first, then growing stronger with each passing day. Even with the love and support, Samantha knew the darkness hadn't entirely vanished. The nightmares, though less frequent, still haunted her sleep. The fear of the dark, a primal instinct, refused to be completely extinguished. I still get scared, but I can handle it now. But now she faced them with a newfound resilience. The experience, though harrowing, had forged a strength within her she never knew she possessed. She learned to navigate the shadows, to find light in the darkest of corners. There's always a way, always. The attic, once a source of terror, became a symbol of her victory, a testament to her courage, a reminder that even in the face of overwhelming fear, there was always hope. And as Samantha stood at the attic window watching the sunrise paint the sky with vibrant hues, she knew that while the shadows might linger, the light would always find a way to break through. The light will always find a way.